Thank you for joining me this morning. We are grateful to Father Duncan, Sue and Stephen Oakes, who run this live streaming, its appearance later on YouTube and the website. There are many useful links there, including musical ones from Richard Dean and junior church material from Margaret Collier. There were technical difficulties on Thursday, Ascension Day, and distracted by these, I omitted the sermon. The Gospel readings are closely connected at this time of the Church's year, so I'm going to offer my reflections for Ascension Day before we begin today's Mass. St Luke's Gospel ends with a description of Jesus' last resurrection appearance to his disciples. He withdraws from them and is carried up into heaven. It is generally accepted that St Luke was also the writer of the Acts of the Apostles. That book, an account of the early years of Christianity, starts with a description of the same event. It's common sense, really. If you're writing two volumes on something, you start volume two with a reminder of where volume one ended. On Ascension Day, we read the Gospel account of what came to be called Jesus' Ascension. The Acts account was set as the first reading. There are differences between the accounts. For example, the Gospel version is set on the evening of the first Easter day, the day Jesus was raised. Acts puts it 40 days later and includes an appearance of two men in white robes, angels. As I've said many times, differences can be interesting, but what matters is the meaning of the event described. There is a sense of fulfillment. Jesus indicates that everything written about him in scripture has been fulfilled as it had to be. In both versions, there is a promise that the disciples will be given the Holy Spirit, power from on high to proclaim the gospel, repentance and forgiveness of sins to all nations. This corresponds to the teaching we've heard in the Sunday readings recently from St. John's Gospel, where Jesus says that unless he leaves the disciples and goes to the Father, the Holy Spirit cannot come. Fulfillment the promise of the Spirit, proclaiming the Gospel. Already we can see a richness of meaning as we think about the ascension of Jesus. But we can go further. One of the most profound thinkers about the life of Jesus is Saint Paul. He counts the appearance of Jesus to him on the road to Damascus as a resurrection appearance. Ascension days second reading came from his letter to the Ephesians. He writes, God raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and dominion and power. There is a sense here of victory over the powers of evil. St. Paul goes on, God has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So Jesus' ascension is for the church. In other words, we share Christ's victory. Paul makes this explicit in a later part of the letter to the Ephesians, where he says about Christians what he said about Jesus. God raised us up with him and made us sit with him in the heavenly places. Central to Paul's thinking is the church as the body of Christ, Christ being the head. Where the head is, there the body will be also. Images blend of body as an actual human body and body as a group of people. The point is, the more we become the body of Christ on earth, the more we shall share in his ascension, being with him in heaven. 
We do not experience this yet in a bodily sense. Physically, we are still in the world. But as the Collect for Ascension Day puts it, we go with Jesus in heart and mind. Putting it another way, our membership of the body of Christ is our participation in heaven. Membership of the body of Christ includes what we would term coming to church in normal times, but it's not limited to that. It's about living a Christian life in which the community is central to what we do at all times, in worship, in service, in witness, in fellowship, in giving, and building up the community in all sorts of ways. Our precise involvement will vary from person to person and at different times in our lives. The body has many different members. But thinking of the ascension puts all we do in the light of the glory of Christ, who shares his glory with us as we seek to be faithful on earth. Amen. And now we begin Mass for today, the seventh Sunday of Easter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Today's opening sentence. Lord, hear my voice when I call to you. My heart has prompted me to seek you. I seek your face, Lord. Do not hide it from me. Alleluia. In a moment of silence, let us call to mind our sins and pray that God will raise us and share his victory over evil with us. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. Lord, have mercy. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. Christ, have mercy. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. Lord, have mercy. The God of love and power, forgive you and free you from your sins. Heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of God the Father, receive our prayer for you alone are the holy one you alone are the lord you alone are the most high jesus christ with the holy spirit in the glory of god the father amen let us pray O god the king of glory you have exalted your only son jesus christ with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Saint John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, 
so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence, with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So, the second sermon this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today can be called the Sunday after Ascension. The other title, the seventh Sunday of Easter, emphasizes that we are still in the Easter season, celebrating glorious events which are closely connected to each other. It's just like Epiphany being part of the Christmas season. If you've followed the Gospel readings and my reflections over the last few Sundays, you'll remember that Jesus taught his disciples that he had to return to the Father before the Spirit could be given to them, or would be given to them. So the simple picture we have in our minds today is of Jesus sitting in heaven and his followers on earth waiting for the Spirit to be sent. We will celebrate that next Sunday, Pentecost, 50 days after Easter. At this period, the Church's calendar follows a sequence of events set out in the Book of Acts. The Gospel of John has a different timetable. Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit upon the disciples on Easter Day in the evening. It's confusing, but we are dealing with meeting points of time and eternity, not just history in a what happened when approach. Today's Gospel reading is the first part of Jesus' prayer after his lengthy teaching to his disciples at the Last Supper. After praying, he will go out to a garden where he will be arrested. The prayer is appropriate for our thoughts today because Jesus says he is coming to the Father and prays, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. Jesus is returning to the Father, having finished his work on earth, which was his Father's work, the work his Father gave him to do. In prayer, Jesus says what that work was. I have made your name known to those you have given me from the world. I have made your name known. This may not sound very exciting until we remind ourselves that in Jewish thought, knowledge of a name implied knowledge of the person. When God appeared to Moses 
in the burning bush, Moses asked for his name and received the reply, I am who I am. This is clearly in the background when in St. John's Gospel, Jesus's identity is questioned and he replies, before Abraham was, I am. To know Jesus is to know the Father, as he tells the disciples, specifically Thomas and Philip, as we heard a week or two ago. This focus on the name appears at the end of today's reading when Jesus prays, Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me. The context makes it clear that it is protection from a world opposed to Jesus that is being sought. This is how we are to understand Jesus' statement that he is praying for his followers rather than for the world. He is conscious that the world, represented by his nation's rulers and the occupying Roman power, has turned against him and will oppress his followers in the future. We have to balance this negative view of the world against the declaration that God loves the world. Our missionary efforts must involve challenging what is wrong as well as affirming what is good. Today we celebrate the victory of our Lord and open ourselves to the coming of the Holy Spirit who will inspire what we do. Amen. Let us declare our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and the world and for all people according to their needs. Almighty Father, we pray that the church may know it is called by you that all its members may grow in the truth you gave us in Christ and continue to give. That we may realize the unity which is your will. On this Anglican Communion Sunday, we ask for your blessing and guidance upon the Archbishop of Canterbury and senior staff in the Communion. Also for Michael, our Bishop, and we pray that through the witness of all church members, people may be drawn to know you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for a just peace to be established throughout the world. We ask your blessing upon Elizabeth, our Queen, and all in authority. We pray that you would 
bring your strength to all victims of the plane crash in Karachi, Pakistan, and for those preparing in Western Australia for severe weather. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the right ways to be found to deal with the coronavirus pandemic, for healing, for comfort for the bereaved, for strength for families under strain. We ask for your guidance as we move into different ways of living and we pray for the offering of mutual support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you our prayers for all suffering because of the pandemic and others who are sick in whatever way. We pray for healing and deliverance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend those who have died recently into your kingdom, especially David Holloway, Ian Thornwill, John Farrington. For our own loved ones departed this life, and for those whose anniversaries occur this week, Ronald Johns, Brenda Fleer, Stanley Aldridge, Frederick Tunnicliffe, Robert Cox, and Marjorie Alcock. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. We join our prayers with those of Our Lady, St. John the Divine, and all the saints, and we commend ourselves and all people into your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. Alleluia. The peace of the risen and ascended Lord be always with you. Lord, accept the prayers and gifts we offer in faith and love. May this Eucharist bring us to your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The prayer that follows is different from the one posted on the website. I suggest you just follow the stream and pick up again at Holy Holy. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is our great high priest, who has entered once for all into the heavenly sanctuary, evermore to pour upon your church the grace and comfort of your Holy Spirit. He is the one who has gone before us, who calls us to be united in prayer, as were his disciples in the upper room, while they awaited his promised gift, the life-giving spirit of Pentecost. Therefore, all creation yearns with eager longing, as angels and archangels sing the endless hymn of your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray in the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
This is the prayer of Jesus, that his believers may become one, as he is one with the Father. Alleluia. Let us pray. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son Jesus Christ has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Spirit of truth lead you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. With Mary, we give thanks for the resurrection and ascension of her Son. And we look forward to joining her and all the saints in our heavenly destiny. Joy to you, O Queen of Heaven. Alleluia. He whom you were meet to bear. Alleluia. As he promised has arisen. Alleluia. Pour for us to God your prayer. Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary. Alleluia. For the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. O God, by the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have vouchsafed to give joy to the whole world. Grant, we beseech you, that helped by the prayers of the Virgin Mary, his mother, we may obtain the joys of eternal life. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Thank you for your offering of worship. If you have the technology, do join others at 11.15 on Zoom for conversation and fellowship. I give my thanks to Father Duncan for hosting it. All best wishes for the coming week. Do keep in touch.